I'm just broadcasting it live. So it should be up any minute for you, Tessa and Emily, if you guys want to share it on your pages, whatever you choose to do. <clears throat> Let's see. Hey, it's working. I hope. Oh, there we go. I always have to mute it. Otherwise, we're like in surround sound. <clears throat> Welcome to Oily Fireside Chat, you guys. We're doing Q&A tonight. Um, just going to wait a little bit for some people to kind of pop on and get going. We are two minutes early and we're usually right on time. <clears throat> so don't mind the mess behind me. I've been card making and I blurted out in a video at work and it was just too much. So I'm like, okay, we'll just leave that alone. I see Wendy just popped on and said, hi. Hi, Wendy. Wendy, I don't know if you remember, but you used to babysit my sister at Sunshine Preschool. <laughs> so it's like a small world. <clears throat> And now she's grown up and has three kids of her own. Um, okay, so as usual, we love, love, love it. If you share our videos, we want to get oily education into everybody's homes because we're so passionate about natural health. So if you could share our videos, just take a moment to do that and help support our small businesses. We really appreciate that. Plus it enters you for prizes. So that's kind of awesome. Um, for those of you who have the Zoom link and want to join us live, that's awesome. You are welcome to be on video or without video and just ask us questions and join in. That's always fun. But you should know when you come on that I have this set up so that you're automatically muted and your video is off. So you'll have to manually turn those on if you um, want to be on video or heard. And the reason we do that is because we upload the replays of this to YouTube and um, we do it in a public forum. So we don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable having their video out there. Um, I'm curious what everyone's diffusing tonight because I have had a little bit of a switch into fall mode and it's been a lot of, I've been doing um, stress away. I do three drops of stress away, two drops of cinnamon bark and one drop of nutmeg and it smells like apple pie. So I'm curious if any of you have any fall scents that you have been diffusing. I will have to try that. Um, this morning I had thieves five drops of thieves and two drops of orange and that was really good and then when that round of my diffuser ran out in the living room I put in stress away but it was just straight stress away because the girls were being fun <laughs> um but I will have to try it you said cinnamon and nutmeg yep I'm gonna try that I like apple pie of course yeah. if I diffuse that I might end up baking it and that's dangerous then you might have to bring it over to me and <laughs> Shame. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help me out a bit. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, I see Teresa hopped on. Hi, Teresa. <clears throat> um, tonight we're doing Q and A. So, um, I had a question posed to me um, after I asked for Q and A that um, I answered, but I think would be great to address here. Tessa, I think you had some questions. Um, Emily, not sure if you had any posed to you or if you had any you wanted to ask, but we're welcome to chat about it here. For those of you watching, if you have questions, if they piggyback off of what we're talking about, or if you just have one that you want to post, um, post it in the comments below. I think it's below our video on Facebook. Um, I'm watching the comments. Tessa's watching comments on her end. Um, so we'll do our best to answer them live. Um, 
ironically, one of the questions we were posed, I don't have a amazing answer because I'm not super well versed in it, but I probably will get to be because now I'm curious and want to look it up some more. Um, so we aren't going to talk about things that we don't know about as if we know about them. And I guess I just want to be honest about that with you guys. We're going to do our best to answer. And we've got some wonderful tools right at our fingertips that we can look stuff up and share our experiences with you. So don't be shy. If you've got questions, post them in there. And we are about to do our drawing for the um, likes, comments, and shares. Remember, you get double entries for when you share on your Facebook page. Um, and then at the end, we do another drawing for those who watched us live. So if you haven't said hello, um, say hello so that we know you caught us live and then we get you on the prize wheel. I have a new spinner tonight that I'm so excited about. Okay. <laughs> it's the little things, you guys. Let me do this here. Share screen. Wheel of names. Here we go. Can you see it? Awesome. Okay, so here's what I love about this wheel. I get to shuffle the names around so that when you have double entries, you're not right next to each other. Um, okay, so I got it shuffled, spinning. Hey, Mackenzie is our winner. Ooh. I don't know if you can hear the sound effects, but that was kind of fun. Um, congrats, Mackenzie. We'll get a prize out in the mail to you, um, <clears throat> hopefully this week. I have a couple prizes. Where'd they go? Actually, they're behind my shelf here. Um, from last week. So Tessa, remind me, I need some addresses from you. Two of them, I think. Um, all right, so Q&A. Do you want to start, Tessa? I've been talking too much already. Sure, I can start. Awesome. Um, all right. So one of the questions I had from a few weeks ago that we didn't get around to during our um, toxic chemical switching out, um, because we had so many of them, was carpet cleaner and upholstery cleaner. So that's kind of an interesting topic. I don't have a ton of carpeting in my house and I have no upholstery that's really worth cleaning. So like I hadn't really, like Rose was saying, we don't talk about stuff we don't know. We don't BS our way through these. Like we actually do our research. And part of my research was trying it out because I hadn't done these before. I've done carpet cleaners, but it's usually like spot cleaning. Um, so that's just like your clothes, like the Thieves stain stick, just straight thieves in a roller ball and wherever my girls spilled grape juice or tomato sauce quick get it or get it after you realize it's set in and that works really well so that's just straight thieves cleaner but if you have a large spot you're not going to want to do straight thieves cleaner all over the place so um another um like a large carpet spot cleaner is one cap full of thieves household cleaner and six cups of water you mix the water and thieves household cleaner in a spray bottle shaking it to combine um, and then you lightly spray the spot and blot with a clean white cloth, repeat as needed. I think the white is just so you can see that the stain is coming up. Um, I do use Norwex claws, the Enviro claws. That's usually what I use with my thieves and I love it. I've been using Norwex for years and Norwex and Young Living work really, really well together. Um, if you don't know where to get Norwex, I know some lovely ladies who would love to support Young Living and Norwex together. The other thing for Thieves Cleaner for cleaning carpets that I found, so the like small spot, straight thieves, then like a large spot, spray bottle, one cap full of thieves to six cups water. The other thing that I found, and I haven't done this one yet, um, but I found a lot of testimonials about it is for those, like if you rent the rug doctor from your local store, we actually found one on Facebook Marketplace. We have a rug doctor of our own. There's like a Bissell steam cleaner thing. There's a Hoover carpet cleaner. So like all of those carpet cleaner brand thingies. Um, there are a number of testimonials and I'm definitely trying this in a few weeks when we clean our carpets 
you can, instead of the solution, like Rug Doctor sells a Rug Doctor solution, you can do Thieves Cleaner instead. Some of the testimonials had a one for one, like if it's a half a cup of the Rug Doctor stuff, they do a half a cup Thieves. The majority of people were like, that's just wasteful. Thieves Cleaner is so concentrated, you do not need that much. The majority of what I found were one to three capfuls for your entire tank of water in these things. So that's like one to three capfuls for an entire tank of water for cleaning. I mean, a tank will do half of our living room. So one to three capfuls of thieves for half our living room. Yes, please save me that money. And yeah, so point. much better for our lungs because have you looked at what's in that rug doctor solution? So that's what I found for those. They said if you want it to smell extra good, you can add a couple of drops of the Thieves Essential Oil Blend in there as well. That'll make your carpet smell nicer for longer. Um, so then, so that's carpets. Small, medium, and whole carpet. Then for upholstery and couches and stuff, um, this is the one that I tried and I really liked. There's a lot of them out there. If you just go to Pinterest and type in Thieves Upholstery Cleaner, there's so many. This is the one I liked um, because it also deodorized and removed some stains. So in a large glass bowl, combine one capful of Thieves Household Cleaner with one to two cups of baking soda. Mix well. Let sit for 24 hours to thoroughly combine. Add five drops of lavender essential oil for an extra boost of freshness. I actually did lemon. I liked lemon better than lavender. Um, just because it's really fresh and clean. But lavender works really well, like on your comfy, cozy couch. Um, you know, help you fall asleep. So then you sprinkle this combo lightly over furniture and wait one hour. Good thing to do during nap time. <laughs> Use a stiff brush and back and forth motions to work the cleaner into the fabric, then vacuum up the excess. This worked really well. And you can do this for mattresses too. And Kara still kind of wets the bed sometimes. So I did her mattress and it worked super, super well. It doesn't smell like pee anymore. So that's the upholstery cleaner that I tried, used, and loved. Do you want to answer a question? I've got another one, but do you want to take a turn? No, I can, yeah, I can pop in. I just want to add to, I've done um, a carpet refresher with just baking soda and a couple drops of, you know, essential oil of choice. Um, I love and that worked that. really well. I usually do citrus fresh for that one. So I really like that one too. Oh, my internet popped out for a minute there. Can you, am I back? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, the question, um, actually the question that I was posed that Tessa was asked, um, is about essential oils and cats. And Tessa doesn't have any cats. So she's like, hey, Rose, you've got a couple cats. You want to chat about cats and essential oils? And um, this is another one of those where I have to admit, I don't know a ton about it, which is kind of sad because I have two cats. Um, but I don't know a lot about it for a couple reasons. Um, I don't use oils topically on my cats um, or internally. My cats are pretty healthy. And so um, I haven't had a need to start investigating like what to do with them. We also have two dogs and I will tell you that I have used oils on my dogs. I've used oils to kind of chill them out. I used um, lavender to calm my one dog scout when she was having some separation anxiety. And I also used, um, I think it was, it was Clary Sage. I used Clary Sage when she was having a false pregnancy. Um, and there was another oil I used, I'll have to look it up, but it was mostly Clary Sage. Um, so I've used oils on my dogs more than my cats because they've just had a need. Um, and, and then in that moment, I kind of researched it to know what was safe and what I should use. But the cats, I will say, ever since I started using oils, I have one cat that's particularly shy. Um, some people come over to our house and say, what, you have an orange cat? Like I never have seen him before because he's always hiding. 
Um, but since I started using oils, his personality has changed. He's become way more affectionate, uh, very, very outgoing, also more energetic. Um, he's lost a little weight because he's kind of running around and playing now, um, which is good because he's a little chunky. Um, and I've noticed that cats in particular, we know cats to be a little bit fickle sometimes and they know what they like. So what you find is if you want to diffuse oils around your pets, because I did not have time to research every single possible oil I would use, um, let them have an out. So you are pretty safe diffusing things like you know, lavender, lemon, the citrus oils that are pretty kind of chill, right? You might need to look up something like a tea tree or um, the mints tend to be a little bit more um, dangerous, if you will, living on the edge. I don't want to say dangerous, but they're controversial, right, for use with um, kids and being careful with adults just because they're so potent. And we've talked about don't get peppermint too close to your eyes when you're um, treating like sinus issues and whatnot. So I think people already know to be a little bit more cautious about certain oils. And people typically know who use oils, which ones are generally the most safe. If your pets have an out and they don't like the smell, or it's bothersome to them, then they will leave. So my cats, if they don't like what I'm diffusing, they'll leave the room and they won't come in there and it's no big deal. There are some citrus oils that you can use on your furniture because it's safe for them, but they don't like it. And so then they don't jump up on your furniture. Um, so that, honestly, that's the extent of what I know about oils. Lavender um, has been the most beneficial, I would say, and kind of chilling. That's what I'm diffusing most often. It's one of my favorites. Chilling them out and um, kind of helping anxiety and personality issues there. I'll do some more research on oils that are not safe for cats and dogs. We really should do a whole night about oils and pets. And Tessa, I know you've learned a ton about oils with chickens. So, um, and a lot of people, I know uh, my friends, Frank and Laura, they raise chickens and they, uh, Mackenzie actually um, won a prize tonight. So they would love to probably learn about some of that stuff. So I think maybe an upcoming class would be good on pets. Yeah, you know, I actually ordered from LSP before they went discontinued. I ordered an animal desk reference, kind of like the one we have for people. Um, it's just not here yet, but I was kind of thinking that a series on animals would be good because most people don't realize we have an entire animal sense line, like with TOA and the paw, paw balm stuff. And I mean, we have an entire line just for animals. I mean, we even have animal snacks and most people don't know about it just because it's not talked about a lot. So, um, the trick I learned from my aunt actually that cats don't like cinnamon or lemon essential oil. So she makes a spray for her tree skirt every Christmas so that the cats don't knock over her Christmas tree. So that's that's some fun cat fact I know, but I don't have cats. So thank you for sharing, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have more useful information than that, but I mean, it is what it is, so. You can do research and do a series on animals. Yeah. I'll cover chickens and you can research cats and maybe yes. and then Janelle can do dogs or something. Right, there we go. Um, so do you want me to tackle another question next? Yeah, sure. So I had a, someone ask me two weeks ago specifically about gout. And as a medic, gout isn't really something you know much about in an ambulance. Most people don't call 911 for gout flare-ups. So I was like, hmm, <laughs> good question. I have no idea what even causes gout. I know it's a joint thing. Is it like arthritis? Like I, di I didn't even really know what gout was aside from Benjamin Franklin had it. <laughs> That's about the extent of what I knew. So I had to do some re research on gout. So I'm going to read you a little bit from mayoclinic.org because I was educated. I figured you all might like to be too. So gout occurs 
when urate crystals accumulate in your joint, causing the inflammation and intense pain of a gout attack. Urate crystals can form when you have high levels of uric acid in your blood. Your body produces uric acid when it breaks down purines, substances that are found naturally in your body. Purines are also found in certain foods, such as steak, organ meats, and seafood. Other foods also promote, promote higher levels of uric acid, such as alcoholic beverages, especially beer, and drinks sweetened with fruit sugar, also known as fructose. Normally, uric acid dissolves in your blood and passes through your kidneys into your urine, but sometimes either your body produces too much uric acid or your kidneys excrete too little uric acid. When this happens, uric acid can build up, forming sharp needle-like urate crystals in a joint or surrounding tissue that cause pain, inflammation, and swelling. All right. So from that, I got that this is not only a joint issue, but it also seems to be like a digestive issue more in what you're eating than how your body digests it. But it seems to be like a blood cleansing type of thing and maybe that your kidneys aren't functioning 100%. So I not only looked up oils for symptoms of gout, but I looked up oils to help with kidney health and to help with blood cleansing. Because I figured, you know, with me going through the toxic liver disease, I didn't just want to treat the symptoms. I wanted to find the cause. So that's what I did for this lady who was asking about gout. I looked for the cause. So for kidney health, there's quite the list. And I'm not going to read the reasons for all of them. I'll read the like 12 oils that I found, the top 12 oils. It's not even all of them. I'll just read the top 12. And then a couple of things I found of interest. And then um, I will move on to the blood thing. So for kidney health, lemon, helichrysum, tangerine, orange, rosemary, geranium, lime, cilantro, cinnamon, grapefruit, juniper, and cassia. So um, the lemon, orange, lime, and grapefruit, so pretty much all your citrus essential oils, may reduce the risk of kidney stones by promoting liver and kidneys by detoxification. Um, to benefit from these oils, use two drops twice per day in water or another beverage of your choice. If for gout, I suggest not beer or something with fructose, since that's going to aggravate your symptoms. <laughs> um, helichrysum kind of works in the similar way with liver and kidney detoxification. This oil should be applied directly to your lower abdomen twice a day for those results. Um, rosemary, cilantro, and juniper, tangerine, and geranium all create a beautiful blend that help detoxify the whole body. Um, some of these I have to be careful to read because it's not exactly FDA compliant, so I'm skipping certain things. Um, so that's more for kidney health. And if you're interested in more for kidney health, I can definitely give you more. Um, I just can't read it from that website. <laughs> Not on this video anyways. So for promoting healthy blood and blood detoxification, um, grapefruit, which was also in the list for kidney. This one is really great at promoting circulation in the lymphatic system and it can eliminate toxins that build up and it prevents drainage. Juniper can support and act as a diuretic. It helps to expunge the body of toxins that can build up and affect the blood and organs. Lemon is also beneficial in cleansing the entire body. It encourages white blood cells to fight toxins that enter the body and helps release them. And peppermint, I can't read half of what this website says about it, but it helps to detoxify and it aids the respiratory, digestive, and circulatory systems. So that's what I can read to you about peppermint. <laughs> um, okay, so then specifically for gout, I looked up from healthline.com and then I also have my desk reference because you know I use that thing all the time, my textbook. So lemongrass is really, really good. There are some studies on like ancient folk medicine. Um, uh, how do I reword this? Um, in ancient folk medicine, lemongrass was used and found to be very beneficial with discomfort. And 
I don't know a creative word for that one. When things get big and red and really uncomfortable and kind of like they're on fire. Um, <laughs> so there's there's that one. So lemongrass is really, really good topically when you're having a flare up. Um, celery seed oil. If you know what N-A-S-I-D stands for, um, things like ibuprofen or um, acetaminophen would fall into that category of over-the-counter things. Um, celery seed oil is a really great alternative for those. Um, I think you're books. saying the oil itself has anti-inflammatory properties. I can't say that word because of the FDA, but the website says it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last one on healthline.com that I found uh, to be super helpful, and this one I know from personal experience, um, according to researchers, ginger is very good with the free radicals in your body and also the word that Rose just said about things that flare up and has anti-gout properties. So ginger may be able to reduce uric acid levels and prevent future gout flares. So that one's really, really good. Um, it can be applied topically or it can be added to tea or taken as a capsule. So that one, ginger specifically, um, is really, really good for gout. And then this book, has, which the app is still available, you can get the app. This one has a really nice gout blend, which you just mix it up in a roller ball and then roll it on when you're having a gout flare up. It is 10 drops of lemon, five drops of Idaho blue spruce, four drops of juniper, three drops of tea tree, and two drops of Roman chamomile. There's a whole bunch more info on gout. There's a whole bunch of singles and blends and nutritional supplements and personal care products. Um, I would like to point out that they have the Cool Azul Sports Gel and Cool Azul Pain Relief Cream, both of which have the helichrysum in them. We talked about that, so that's also helpful. So that's what I have for gout. I researched the cause and other things that could be going wrong, and I researched the symptoms for you. So there you go. I All actually, about gout. I have a kidney roller that I use from time to time, and I looked in the app that I got it from, and I cannot find it off the top of my head. So I will research it and bring it for next awesome. time. I know it has um, juniper in it though. That's the main scent that it has. So, <clears throat> um, okay. The, I only have one more question. Um, the question that I was asked was actually about our starter kit. And I thought it would be great to touch on it here. Um, I was asked if when you purchase the Young Living Starter Kit, can you choose the oils that you want to come in your starter kit? Or is it a kit that Young Living has already put together for you? And I thought that was a really, really great question. Um, so first of all, there is an option to buy a wholesale membership basically for, what is it now, 35 bucks, I think? And Stress Away comes with that um, $35 kit option. However, that's all you get for your 35 bucks besides your continued discount in oils. So I always tell people to shy away from that because it's not as good of a deal as the premium starter kit. And here's the thing, while Young Living does already have a packaged starter kit, you can't choose which oils you want to put in it. I would bet that you probably would choose almost all of the oils that come in the kit because what they've done is taken all their popular oils. And let's be honest, if you're ordering a starter kit, you're probably gonna put in lavender. Everyone's gonna put in lavender. You're probably gonna put in peppermint. Everyone's gonna put in peppermint. You're probably gonna put in lemon because we have learned a crap load of stuff about lemon here. And um, it's so awesome and powerful. So you know you're putting lem lemon in there. 
everyone, everyone, everyone asks me about an oil for discomfort. So you know you're putting pan away in that kit. Um, you're going to want something to deal with stress. So you're putting stress away in that kit. You are going to want something to boost your immune system. And Young Living is the only company out there that has thieves. So you know you're putting thieves in your starter kit, right? Because we're building our best kit of all the awesome oils we want. Um, you're going to want something for energy and citrusy that goes into your water. So you know citrus fresh is coming next. As soon as you smell peace and calming, you're putting that puppy in there because it's the best scented oil that they have. I'm missing some because that's only eight. Raven, Raven, Dye, yes, frankincense, okay. and valor. Okay, so you want the powerhouse of oils, the grandfather of all oils. So you know frankincense is going in there. And everyone everywhere is talking about respiratory issues. So you know you're putting Raven in there. Frankincense Raven. What was the last one? I should just leave myself unmuted. Valor. Sorry. Valor. Oh, gosh. Okay, that's the other one that when you <laughs> smell it, you're going to order it, right? Plus, everyone has a snoring somebody in their life. So you're going to want Valor anyway, okay? Those, are, let's be honest, those are the oils you're putting in your kit. You're not putting clary sage in there. You're not, maybe you'd add orange or cedar wood because they're awesome, but you can still add them. They're like 10 bucks, big deal, you know? Well, and the thing that I love most, and if you're not joining Young Living for like health reasons, if you're not a health nut like I am, um, and you don't have that like A and P physiology like background kind of stuff maybe this isn't as of much interest to you if you're just doing it for smells like rose is saying you smell it you'll want it um but for me when you look at the oils that young living scientifically put together they support every single system of your body with those 12 oils valor not only is the oil of courage it's for spinal alignment and central nervous system health frankincense not only great for grounding and spiritual health but it's like the best skin oil available lavender supports the aug aug augmentary system as well as supporting healthy sleep the um raven like rose said respiratory system thieves like rose said immune system i mean and some of these oils do multiples um, like piece and, like lemon. Okay. We talked about lemon with lemon two, does everything. <laughs> yeah. Like two of the three things I talked tonight had lemon. So actually all, yep. All three of them, kidney, blood circulation and joints, lemon covered all three and it covers digestive system. And it, I mean, seriously, you need lemon. Um, <laughs> oh, digize. That's yep. the other one. I forgot. Yep. Yeah. Digize. So your digestive system. So if you just look at the 12 oils of the starter kit, not only for smell, but seriously, every system of your body is supported with those 12 oils. They got science people together and went, how do we support an entire body in one kit? And they did it. It's, it's a, incredible. If you look at it from a scientific health perspective, I, I don't know any other better oils they could have put in there for you. And it's not cheap ones. Frankincense, expensive on its own. Valor, not the cheapest oil. Peace and calming, not the cheapest oil. If you're just looking at the lemon and you're like, yeah, they really put cheap oils in there. Thank the Lord lemon is cheap. I go through a bottle a month, okay? So like, I love the starter kit. They, they really put time and effort into it. It's an amazing kit. Yes. And then you get the, the, um, discount after that. Oh, yeah. Right. So like, so long story short, no, you can't choose the oils that go in it. You can choose the oils that you want on your monthly subscription when you do oh, yeah. ER and you're going to want to get on that because you're going to want to add things like cedarwood and orange and lime and tangerine and all the amazing citrus oils we talk about here and then by the time you go through that you're going to need to restock your peace and calming you're going to need to restock your lemon and your lavender because you'll be out of that you know and thieves, household cleaner. and thieves and you're going to need all the cleaner stuff so okay no you can't choose the oils that are in it but if you could 
these are the oils you would choose. This is what you would pick. Like, I'm not just pulling your leg here. I almost swore. I'm not pulling your leg here. Like, this is what you would pick. Like, I would pick these all day long. In fact, I would pick them all day long, but I have ordered the starter kit twice to refill my oils because it's so cheap. Mm -hmm. It's so cheap to get them that way. I can't get these oils any other cheaper way. So like, okay, I'm out of almost everything. I'll order another starter kit. And it's like over 50% off. So like, and you people, another you can just keep reordering the starter kit. Get your, because this is what you're going to use all the time. These are the ones I'm refilling. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, so... And you get more diffusers for your house because every yes. time you order a starter kit, you get another diffuser. So you end up with a house like mine or Rose with eight diffusers all over it. I know. And they're the best diffusers ever. They're way better than what you can buy on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Because every single time I get another starter kit. And by the way, I've gotten three, three of them because I got the first one and I've ordered them twice. So I have three Young Living diffusers. I throw away one of my Amazon ones if I can replace it in the room because I want the Young Living. It's better. Sorry, it just is. And they last way longer. Any of the ones I ordered from Amazon were shot within six months. I was like, well, that was a waste of money. Yes. Whereas my original decision so, that I got with my kit. Um, are you lagging a little bit tonight, Rose? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> my original diffuser still runs and that's six years old. So, all right, go for it, Rose. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, that's all. I, I'm off my soapbox now, but so no, you can't pick, but you would pick them anyway. Um, Hey, we've talked their ear off for over a half hour. Should we do our live drawing? We only have two people on my end watching live. I think the same here. I have Wendy and Teresa. I yeah, I think same. Okay. So let me figure out how to do this again. See my wheel? Yes. Wendy and Teresa, you got a 50-50 shot here. I could shuffle you all I want, but doesn't really matter. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Emily, I didn't add you. Stop. Emily, I didn't add you because you're not on Facebook. Sorry, Teresa, we have to redo it. No, oh, that's okay. She's my mom. You can give it to her. Oh. <laughs> well, now that I added you, maybe we'll have to do another prize. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That was luck if I ever saw it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So we'll wrap up. And if you have more questions that you thought of as you're watching us, post it in the comments. We go back and we read them. I know a lot of you have stuff starting now. There's a lot of different like bowling leagues and dart leagues and it's fall. So some of you are crawling into bed a little earlier than usual and you can't catch us live. But you can catch the replay and you can share the replay and you can comment and like on the replay and get entered for these drawings um, just as much as if you watched us live. So um, do all of that so that you get a chance at our fabulous prizes. And if you have questions as you're watching the replay, post them and we'll do our best to answer them. <clears throat> That's it. Awesome. Okay, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye.